Late in the evening, Abigail is rehearsing ballet in a vacant theater. At the same time, a group of criminals prepares for their operation. The hacker disables all the security cameras at Abigail's residence, while the sniper positions himself on the roof. As Abigail leaves the theater, her driver picks her up, unaware that the criminals have placed a tracker beneath the car. Once the vehicle starts moving, so do the kidnappers. The hacker unlocks the house's doors, allowing three of the criminals to sneak into Abigail's bedroom and hide behind the furniture. The woman in the group protests upon realizing they plan to kidnap a child, as she typically avoids involving children, but the others insist she complies. Abigail soon arrives home and lies down on the bed, prompting the criminals to make their move. One man attempts to restrain her, but Abigail defends herself by stabbing his hand with a pencil. The second man then takes over, covering her mouth and capturing her while the first man tries to punch her. The woman stops him from harming a child and injects Abigail with a sedative to put her to sleep. The other half of the team, waiting outside, alerts those inside that a car is approaching. While the sniper keeps an eye on the approaching car, the trio quickly places Abigail in a bag and sneaks out through a window. As they cross the garden and rejoin the sniper, the alarms go off, forcing them to run. Luckily, the last two criminals arrive just in time to pick them up and they escape without any issues. During the drive, they check Abigail's pulse to ensure she's okay and blindfold her. When they are about to hit traffic, the hacker advises the driver to take an alternate route, prompting the driver to make a sudden turn and hide the van behind a large truck. Eventually, they reach their destination, an old abandoned mansion on the outskirts of the city. There, they meet Lambert, the man who hired them. After handcuffing Abigail to a bed, Lambert reminds the group of the rules. They must not share any names or personal stories, and they should refrain from getting too familiar with each other. It's a round-the-clock job, so they need to keep an eye on Abigail until her wealthy father coughs up the $50 million. Lambert doesn't reveal the father's identity, but collects everyone's phones to prevent tracking. Before departing, Lambert assigns each team member a code name inspired by the Rat Pack. The team then starts indulging in the house's supply of drinks. Joey refuses to share her candy with Dean, who, acting clever, tries to deduce everyone's backstory but fails. When Joey mocks him, the others bet some money on her ability to do better. By analyzing their body language, clothes, and personalities, she accurately guesses each one. In turn, Frank deduces that Joey is a recovering addict. Joey then checks on Abigail, who complains that the blindfold is too tight. Joey covers her face and removes the blindfold, noticing that the handcuffs are hurting her. She recuffs Abigail's hands in front. As Abigail starts crying, Joey reassures her that they don't intend to hurt her and only want the money, leading Abigail to make her do a pinky promise. Joey shares that she has a son, and Abigail reveals that they made a mistake because her father doesn't care about her. As Joey is about to leave, Abigail apologizes for what is about to happen to her. Concerned, Joey informs Frank that Abigail's father might be a violent man. Frank dismisses it as Abigail trying to manipulate Joey's feelings, but he discreetly checks on the child. He's startled to find her without the blindfold and immediately covers his face, pointing his gun at her until she swears she didn't see him. Frank then presses her until she reveals that her father is Christophe Lazar. Panicking, Frank rushes back to the group and announces his intention to leave. The others demand an explanation, and Frank reveals that the girl is the daughter of Christophe Lazar, a notoriously dangerous and powerful crime boss. Joey and Rickles recognize the name and share Frank's concern. An argument breaks out over how to proceed, but they eventually decide to stay and get the money, which they can use to escape and start a new life far away. They agree to monitor the perimeter and keep all doors locked. Later, Joey is exploring the house following a noise that turns out to be an open window. As she closes it to stop the noise, she notices an old statue of a father and his child. She then bumps into Rickles, who awkwardly tries to flirt with her and fails. He confides that he doesn't trust the others, and they agree to watch each other's backs. Meanwhile, Sammy finds a room with a TV and is startled by a presence behind her, which turns out to be Dean playing a prank. He has the audacity to flirt with Sammy, who angrily kicks him out. Dean then finds a sleeping Peter and draws a crude image on his face. Wandering around the house, Dean enters a dark corridor lined with old pictures, including one of a girl who looks strikingly like Abigail. Next, he goes to the basement kitchen, where a door opens on its own. Confused, he steps inside and is startled by a rat. As he tries to leave, an unseen presence suddenly grabs Dean by the legs and pulls him back. 
Sammy hears his screams and rushes to the basement, only to find Dean sitting at the table. When she gets closer, his head falls off, causing Sammy to scream and then vomit. The others soon arrive at the basement and agree that Sammy doesn't have the strength to decapitate someone. The scene reminds them of the stories about Lazar's hitman, Valdez. Several years ago, three top members of Lazar's gang were captured by the FBI. The night before their trial, they were kept on the top floor of a hotel with agents guarding every corner. The next morning, the FBI found their bodies with their heads cut off and their organs removed. There was no way in or out of the room except for the door on the 23rd floor. Growing worried, they decide to check on the girl and find her safe in her room. Rickles, still terrified of Valdez, wants to leave, but they agree to look for a way out. But as Joey tries to leave the room, she hears a noise. Rickles is standing rather awkwardly, so she goes to check on him and is horrified to discover that he's been severely injured. His lifeless body falls into her arms and she lays him down before rushing downstairs. A furious Joey aims her gun at Frank, accusing him of being Valdez and killing Rickles. Frank pulls out his gun too, insisting Joey is letting Abigail manipulate her. He orders Peter to deal with Abigail, so Peter heads to her room to kill her. Before he can shoot, Joey arrives and quickly disarms him. Sammy and Frank also join and an argument ensues. Meanwhile, Abigail effortlessly removes her handcuffs and stands up, revealing her true identity as a vampire with a graceful ballet move. Abigail leaps onto Peter, about to bite him, but Frank shoots her down. To everyone's shock, Abigail merely sits up as the wound heals itself. Joey shoots her too, but it's clear that bullets do nothing, so they run and lock the door. The group discusses their options, realizing that Abigail was Valdez all along. All the doors are equipped with magnetically sealed locks and two inch thick shutters, making them unbreakable, and Sammy lacks the equipment to hack them. Tensions rise, and when Peter asks them to slow down, Frank grabs him by the neck, threatening him to shut up. In the end, Frank and Joey grab pool sticks to make steaks, while Sammy looks for garlic in the kitchen. Joey is hesitant, thinking killing Abigail would only anger her father. Once ready, the trio rushes into Abigail's room, only to find it empty. Suddenly, they hear music and go to another room, where they find Abigail dancing with Dean's body. She initially pretends to be a sweet girl, but when Sammy attacks, Abigail jumps on her and sniffs the garlic, which does nothing. Frank is pushed aside when he tries to help, but Peter manages to pick her up. However, Abigail easily throws him to the ground and takes the cross from his necklace, using it to make him bleed and confirming that crosses don't affect her either. Next, Frank tries to stab her from behind, but Abigail quickly disarms him and stabs his leg instead. Defeated, the trio retreats downstairs where Joey helps tend to their wounds. She reminds them that the sedative injection worked when they kidnapped Abigail and they still have a spare syringe. They agree to split up and whoever finds Abigail first must inform Joey through their earpieces so she can surprise her with the syringe. The group starts searching the house, and Sammy takes a dirty corridor, where she is startled by a swarm of bats. This causes her to fall into a pool filled with rotting bodies, forcing her to crawl over them to get out. Meanwhile, Abigail surprises Peter, who runs away in fear and locks the door behind him. However, Abigail breaks the door and continues chasing him with ballet-like movements. Peter is running as fast as he can when suddenly Frank opens a door and accidentally hits him, causing Peter to fall off the railing. Then Abigail chases after Frank, pushing him down the stairs before sitting on him. Joey seizes the opportunity to try to inject her, but Abigail smacks her hand, sending the syringe flying through a locked gate. Sammy grabs Abigail and pulls her away, prompting the child to retaliate by biting her arm. Next, Abigail grabs Frank by the leg and starts flying, only for Peter to suddenly tackle her, causing her to drop Frank. Peter holds Abigail down while Joey retrieves the syringe and quickly injects the sedative into Abigail. The child makes serious threats and calls Joey awful names before passing out. Sammy freaks out, wondering if she'll transform because of the bite. Moments later, Abigail wakes up locked in an elevator. Joey tells her that if she reveals how to get out of there, they'll let her go. Instead, Abigail confesses that she planned everything and that Lambert works for her. She even knows all their real names and backstories. Sammy started her career by taking money from her rich parents' bank account and eventually went after a particular big fish. Peter served as muscle for a crime family and stole from his crew. Frank infiltrated a crime family while working as a detective and ended up enjoying the illegal life. Joey is a former army medic who was fired for becoming addicted to medicine and left her son with his bad father to become an underground doctor for some very shady people. One day, she accidentally killed a gang 
gang member while trying to remove a bullet. It turns out everyone here wronged Lazar or his gang in some way, and Joey says Abigail kills her dad's enemies just to make him love her. Abigail didn't kill them as soon as they arrived because she likes playing with her food. She says that if they let her out, she'll let two of them live. Frank suggests killing her, so an angry Abigail changes the offer to saving only the one who gets her out. Peter quickly takes out his gun, and Joey does the same, as she and Frank explain Abigail is lying. When Peter tries to free her anyway, Joey shoots him. The group leaves except for Frank, who volunteers to keep guard. After everyone's gone, Frank says he'll let her go if she tells him how to get out of the house. Abigail explains that he must pull Agatha Christie's book in the library to open a secret door. Frank thanks her, but refuses to release her, so Abigail easily breaks the door, pushes him, and dances toward him. At that moment, Joey arrives and breaks wooden planks off a window, allowing the sunlight to stream in. The light instantly burns off Abigail's hand, and she runs to hide in the shadows so she can regrow it while Joey and Frank run away. The entire group makes it to the library and stays under the sunlight entering through the high window Joey opened earlier. Nothing happens to Sammy, so she's relieved, thinking she won't turn. Frank pulls the book Abigail mentioned, but nothing happens because she lied too. While he throws a tantrum, Joey tries to break down the wall to no avail. She's run out of candy and is getting very anxious. Joey explains to Sammy that she left her son to get clean and planned to use the money from this job to go back to him and start over as a reset. Hearing this word gives Sammy an idea. If they can find the power source, she can short the locks. The team splits in two and searches the house. Suddenly, Abigail plays music again and takes control of Sammy thanks to the bite. Sammy quickly transforms into a vampire and attacks Peter, biting his neck. Abigail speaks through Sammy while she continues to feed, ultimately killing him. Abigail found amusement in teaching Sammy her dance moves. When Joey and Frank finally arrived, Sammy kept her face concealed initially. Their suspicions mounted until Sammy revealed her transformation, prompting the duo to flee. Sammy pursued them to the library, where Abigail, using Sammy's voice, expressed her disdain for the room. It reminded her painfully of where her father had changed her. Joey improvised with a tray to reflect sunlight, causing Sammy's body to erupt. In the chaos, a secret door opened. Despite Joey and Frank's initial wariness, they ventured through a corridor and stumbled upon the mansion's control center, where they encountered Lambert, a vampire like them. Lambert, under Abigail's influence since she turned him two years earlier for aiding Frank's infiltration, divulged everything. He had alerted Lazar, who was en route to the mansion. Lambert, motivated by a desire to eliminate Abigail and her father, offered Frank the chance to join him by transforming into a vampire. After Lambert incapacitated Joey and began the transformation, Frank betrayed him by staking Lambert, causing him to explode. Just as Abigail arrived and attempted an attack, Frank overpowered her and drank her blood. Joey seized the opportunity to deactivate security measures and retrieve her phone before finding herself trapped in the secret corridor. Meanwhile, as Frank finished feeding on Abigail and discarded Guarded her body, Joey left a heartfelt voicemail for her son. Frank discovered her and forced her back into the library, till Abigail intervened. Weak from her ordeal, Abigail pleaded with Joey to help her kill Frank, promising to release her afterward. Joey reluctantly agreed, and together they battled Frank, but even their combined efforts couldn't match his strength. After Frank incapacitated Abigail and impaled Joey on a pillar, he bit Abigail again, reminding Joey of their pact. With Abigail down, Frank released Joey from the pillar and prepared to transform her. However, Joey pretended compliance, then turned the tables by assisting Abigail in fatally stabbing Frank, causing him to explode. Concerned about her own fate, Joey was reassured by Abigail that she wouldn't transform because Frank was dead. True to her word, Abigail let Joey go, urging her to find her son. As Joey hurried back to the van, she discovered a forgotten lollipop and savored it while driving away. 